Il y a plusieurs raisons de s'intéresser au méthane. And also, its warming capacity is 28 times greater than CO2, and the current emissions are between uh, 600 and 520 and 570 teragrams per year. And uh, the uh, life cycle in the atmosphere is 10 years, much shorter than CO2, which means it's a relatively uh, efficient target to reduce greenhouse effect gas emissions in the atmosphere and at least this means that the time is compatible with political elections. It also contributes to the ozone production in the troposphere, 0 to 10 kilometers, and contributes to the production of water vapor in the stratosphere between 10 and 50 kilometers. Now, methane sources, uh, there are several natural and anthropic sources. Uh, the natural ones are 35%. Of the 120 to 270 teragrams in the human areas, there is an anaerobic decomposition due to RK decomposition. The principal, the main source of methane uh, between 140 and 280 teragrams uh, per year. We also have uh, all other natural sources, sweet water, which may release between uh, 30 and 75, uh, and the uh, gas release uh, sources in the continents or on the continental steps in the ocean, releasing between 30 and 75, and then smaller sources, uh, hydrates, progelisols, uh, fires, uh, wild animals, termites, uh, releasing uh, 2 to 20 teragrams per year, depending on the source. So the total of natural sources between 170 and 270 teragrams per year. Anthropic sources, 65% of the emissions are split between three main categories, extraction and transport, use and combustion of uh, fossil fuels, natural gas, for instance, 85 to 105 teragrams per year. Landfills between 65 and 90, and uh, ruminant cattle, because there is an anaerobic fermentation process uh, happening uh, in the animal's paunch and leading to 85 to 95 teragrams per year of uh, gas release. Rice culture, and finally, biomass combustion. When there is not enough oxygen, the combustion may uh, produce significant quantities of methane. And tropic emissions are a bit more uncertain than the natural ones, but still we know what they represent every year. Once in the atmosphere, the methane will be chemically degraded by OH, the radical OH, an oxidant in the atmosphere, which uh, cancels the greatest part of the uh, methane present in the atmosphere between 450 and 620, and also other sources due to uh, stratospheric chemi chemistry and uh, chloride uh, chemistry in the lower atmosphere. We also have methane sink in dry ground because uh, wet ground will release methane, dry ground will absorb methane. Once in the atmosphere, and when there is a balance between sources and sinks, the methane in the atmosphere, the methane concentration in the atmosphere will vary. Here we have a curve between 1980 and 2013, with an evolution showing a growth until the 90s, stabilization in the growth rate for a few years, and then growth picks up speed again after 2007. If we take the derivative, we have the uh, growth rate, how much methane will accumulate in the atmosphere. And we see that the growth rate will decrease uh, to almost zero because methane was stable in the years 2000, but increases again. And we see variations from one year to another. There are fluctuations between in 97, 98, the fluctuations were due to the El Nino event, the greatest climatic event at the time with this climatic uh, disturbance around the uh, Pacific Ocean and leading to uh, massive uh, forest fires and more methane being accumulated in the atmosphere at the time. And then in order to understand stagnation and growth starting in 2007, well, we, we have no explanation really and we need to work more to understand which source and which sink 
is responsible for the variation. Knowing the methane cycle today allows us to come up with a more credible scenario in order to understand how methane is going to evolve in the future. Now, about the future, there's a very important area for methane, the Arctic area, because this is the most sensitive area for climatic changes, and there is a strong potential of uh, methane emission when the uh, ice melts due to uh, human areas, pergelisol mating, melting in hydrates. Current emissions are 15 to 30 teragrams per year. There is atmospheric uh, monitoring all around the Arctic shown by the red dots and the yellow dots and all the networks in Europe. ICOS uh, and uh, in Siberia uh, with uh, airplanes, but there doesn't seem to be a strong increase in methane uh, over the Arctic, meaning that uh, we don't have many changes right now in the pergelic solid and hydrates, but we have to keep um, an eye on this area. There is a project, a uh, spatial measurement uh, with a satellite uh, whereby from space we will get a better vision of the Arctic area which we do not have nowadays with the current satellites. This will be the Merlin project. Methane emissions, why should we reduce them? Well, because it's probably easier or less complex than with CO2. Technological solutions exist which will have a lower impact on our daily life. There are some solutions, uh, no regret solutions. We can uh, gather biogas and use it, or anaerobic degradations will release methane, which can be maybe uh, stored and used. Uh, this can be done in uh, methane um, digester plants, etc. We can also work on rice culture, semi-wet rice culture lands. We can uh, change the way we feed our cattle. If we could find a win-win situation by changing the way we feed our cattle in order to get milk and meat of better quality while reducing methane emissions, well, why not? There are many studies uh, working on this uh, topic. And finally, we need to eliminate natural gas uh, leaks. Natural gas is fairly expensive uh, normally, but right now natural gas is uh, relatively cheap and this is not inducing uh, industrial companies to uh, manage uh, leaks. And there are also some solutions that need to be looked at because of possible collateral effects. Two very simple examples, drainage of uh, humid uh, agricultural areas. Uh, if we remove humid areas, there will be no methane uh, emissions. So, but the question is, what is going to happen to carbon? Isn't carbon going to be uh, drained away and the uh, land will become poorer? And this is not what we're looking for. And finally, fighting against termites, except that recent studies have shown that uh, termites also provide ecosystemic services, which we might not think about as human beings, but will be important for the biosphere. These two solutions need to be looked into. And for methane, we do have solutions available which would allow us to reduce uh, methane emissions uh, with a relatively substantial impact on uh, greenhouse effect gases on the short term.